Welcome back, folks, to my place, Homestead Aquarius. <laughs> You're looking at something rather ordinary and customary that you're going to find anywhere. In fact, what you see here is all a bunch of simple stuff. I am going to take all of this and show you something today. Y'all know that I've got... Um, I've got some new livestock in the house. Some of my tadpoles that were overwintering in the pond. I brought them inside. And we're going to raise them up for the rest of the winter and release frogs in the spring. That's at least what we hope to do. Along the way, I'm going to use those frogs in their development, the tadpoles, to help me grow my own food. What you're seeing here are the things that I'm going to use today to create something that I need very much. I want to create a natural food source for my tadpoles. Now, here's the thing about aquaponics. It's a lot like aerodynamics and fluid dynamics. It's scalable. What you're doing on the small scale can also work on the big. Little, big. Let me use my shadow. Little and big. It's all the same. And if you do it, you think outside the box, look at things in a different way, do things yourself. You can do some really cool things and you can save yourself a little bit of money as you're doing it. There's going to be several things that I do today. Um, I'm going to make a farm. I'm going to make a little farm for inside the house for my tadpoles. I'm going to start a germination test on these old old um, rattlesnake beans. I may, may do something else too. Yeah, I've got to get some starts on some lemon balm. So um, come along with me and uh, we'll show you where we go from here. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, it's going to be weird. And you know what? Maybe at the end we're going to do some frogs in a blender. <laughs> All right, here we are. Step one. I guess step one when you're doing something is you got to bleed first, right? Well, I've bled for this episode. So y'all make sure you stick around with me here. Out here at my hydroponics area, my 300-gallon stock tank part of it, what we've got here, you can see, is a beautiful day. It is um, in the middle of February, and I'm in my short sleeve shirt. It's a wonderful day here. It's fixing to get cold. You see that partly cloudy sky there. And what you're seeing here again is salvinia. It's an invasive water plant that came from Africa. Here in North America, in the warmer areas of our uh, southern states, it's an invasive species. Wherever it grows, it cuts off the sunlight to every plant that's underneath the water, effectively killing anything but it. That's, that's, that's not a good thing. It's got its uses, though, and I'm going to show you what that is, right? But right now, for the next step of this, I've got to take one of these jars. Remember, these are the dry canning jars, that, or the jars that I bought the other day, right? I said they're good for dry canning. They're also going to be good for what I do today. Yep. I've also got to get, uh, pardon the mess here. It is a mess. Got to get some of that lemon balm over there. Hang on. Oh, it's a mess. I won't bore you with making cuttings of this lemon balm and showing you that, but I wanted to show you this. You hear about plants that love wet feet or dry feet. You also hear about how tough different members of the uh, mint family are, how the survivors, how much of a survivor they are. Well, you're seeing right there, mint of all kinds, really, or, or most kinds, they love wet feet. This is thriving quite well right in the water, right? So keep that in mind. I'm going to take some cuttings and we'll get back to it. Now, here's a look at my baby mulberry trees. Why are we over here? Eh, just to show you except for the one that I gave Mr. Arkansas Woodcutter. These little babies here I started from seed and uh, they're doing quite well. Now look at here, 
This is that salvinia that I just showed you over there in the in the tank, right? It's a uh, bad aquatic species, bad, bad invasive. But in your garden, it'll make a good compost covering up the dirt there. So if you have invasive species, think about something like this as a way to use them. All right, now we're back here. I'm going to go ahead and do the work I need to do with this so it's not such a long video and show you what I've got. I've got this plastic bottle. It's big enough, not too big, to fit down in this jar. I've got a sock. It's actually kind of a clean sock there. It's a new sock. Scissors. And I'm going to get to work on this. There's actually two or three things I'm going to show you today. A couple of new things. Inventions. All right, we're looking good so far. This is what I've got done. Just wanted to show you midway through here. Have you got it figured out what I'm going to do yet? I know some of you probably do. <laughs> Stick around for the next step. All right, next step. I don't know if you can see that real good. Right there is a little bitty tooth that I've cut into this bottle. I've stretched the sock around this bottle. And I've got little teeth at the top and little teeth at the bottom. And we've got a tunnel here. Mm, that's the next step. Now, why am I doing all this? This ain't normal gardening stuff, right? That's right. But this is something that a lot of people might want to do. Maybe they want to, to do something like this and have something with their kids. It's a neat project. And you get a good jump on it uh, when the spring comes. Um, and you can do this with fish, Okay. The little tadpole tank that I have inside the house right now, you can use fish, right? Aquaponics on a small scale. So anyhow, that's what this looks like. What I've got is a tunnel, so it ensures lots of good water flow in there, and then something else. <laughs> All right, here we are at the next step, and we've got this, and we've got our jug, or a little jar here, that's full of this green water. I'm hoping... And I really believe it's that is green like that because it's got little tiny microscopic parts of algae down in there that I want to give a home and help them to grow. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to have to squeeze this in a little bit, right? Real close up of my sock. Can you smell it? Let's put this down in here. We're going to just, <laughs> if we can, we're going to shove it. Just get down in there. That's why we're doing this outside. It's a mess, yo. Now look at here. This right here is giving maximum amount of surface area. What I want to do is catch as much sunlight in this jar as I can and give as much surface area for algae to latch on to and start to grow. This will be a, a, a scaffold to grow some algae for my frogs or my tadpoles. Right now I'm feeding them um, uh, fish food and turtle and uh, frog food that I bought at the store, right? At the pet store. But right now the tadpole, and they're doing fine with that. They're loving it. But I wanted to do this to see if it would work. And if it does, this will be a resource that someone else can use. I could see this being done in a in a school setting, you know, something like this, little components like this, anything to help kids uh, draw their interest into wild things and growing, gardening, biology, family fun. That's what we're looking for here. All right, so this experiment, my little algae farm, we're going to call that done. I'm going to set that on the windowsill, and that would be the last time we see that. Um, for the video and now I'm going to show you uh, something else here I'm going to show you what I do with these two styrofoam cups this is going to be a neat cheap way to reduce reuse and recycle something um, I'm going to show you a better way to hold your cuttings in a um, aquaponics tank or uh, anything like that 
I just thought about that this morning. It's kind of exciting. Little things mean a lot.